Hello, I'm Keith McDonald. For almost 30 years, I used to work here at the City of Toronto. I did tours of duty with public health, special events, strategic communications, the city clerk's office, and information and technology. Ultimately, as the open data lead for the open data initiative. And then I left the city. And now I'm just a citizen at large. Hello, welcome to episode one, volume one, the first one, the rookie one of the blog. I'm not really sure what I'm going to call it. Thick and speaking truth to government, but we'll uh, we'll see if that sticks. Uh, we'll just change the opening or whatever. Uh, but uh, yeah, as you heard in the opening segment, uh, I did work for the city of Toronto for a number of years, and um, I think I learned a few things uh, over time. I worked with a lot of different groups uh, within within the government, and um, this is my chance as a citizen now to um, do things that I never did while I was a city employee. And one of the things was deposing or deputing um, when items come up before uh, council or various committees or agencies. And uh, over the summer, the Toronto Police Services was debating open data, a report that was presented by the chief. So I took advantage of that as my first time. Again, another rookie appearance, if you like, to, uh, to speak about open data. The interesting thing about when you depose is you're only given uh, five minutes. I mean, the rules may vary for different agencies, but generally you've got about five minutes. And um, you, you, can't, you, you might get questions after, or you might not. And once you're done, you're done. And um, the board or whoever's talking after the fact will be debating maybe what you said, maybe what other people said, and you can't weigh in any longer. It was a very interesting experience for me for the first time. In fact, one of my friends said, you know, you retire from the city and now you're going to committee meetings? And in a way, that's true. Um, I, I really wanted to um, see what it was like. And um, having a personal um, agenda for open data, i.e., I want to see it released, uh, is very important that, uh, that you, you, know, you actually uh, put your money where your mouth is or whatever other cliche you might want to say. So short of it is I uh, got a chance to depose, as did several others from the community. And I think we did have an effect, uh, actually, uh, the discussion that ensued afterward. Um, uh, the, the members of the board decided to push things along a little further than probably would have happened had no one deposed, and uh, it was a good thing to see. So there's some things that they need to do, and you can, you can if you're really interested in this, you can, you can actually see the uh, full depositions uh, links at the bottom of the, um, of the screen and the information. But uh, my main point here is I want to talk a little bit about what the, uh, the chief said, and this is where I wish I could have had a chance to engage in dialogue. And uh, what's interesting about open government and open data, of course, is this idea of openness and discussion and process and the crowd uh, engaging where, uh, you know, it's not a closed ship. And uh, it relates to this idea of speaking truth because I say, I, I you know from working in government that there is a hierarchy. People call it the bureaucracy, whatever you like. But I can only imagine what it's like in the police where you do have captains and sergeants and, you know, there is a level. And when you get to the chief of police, that's the highest level. So I'm really curious whether or not any of the staff in the police services will actually speak their minds, speak freely, if you like, about how they feel about open data. And even if they don't, the idea of engaging with the community, who definitely, I, I can tell you, has lots to say about how open data could be used and why they need data and what kind of data they'd like to see. It's very important that that happen. And as you'll see in this next clip, I'm not totally sure that Chief Saunders is on side with that. Let's take a look. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very glad that there's a lot of interest and in, in expertise here. So a lot of people have brought a lot to the table for us to consider as we move forward with uh, our plan and, and, and what we plan on doing. I, I also want to, you know, be very cognizant of the potential latent material consequences here with data. Um, we spend a tremendous amount of time whenever we submit reports as open and as transparently as possible because we try our best to put things in context, not to hide or mislead anybody, but to have a more fulsome picture. So by putting this open data and the type of data that's out there, I mean, heaven help a person that happens to live at a house that is at a corner intersection to a couple of high rises where a lot of crime is happening on the value of that house when it goes up for sale, or heaven and help somebody uh, in a neighborhood that's already stigmatized and the fact that now we're going to stigmatize it even more with all of this data. So I'm hoping that the agencies that see this data use it as a mechanism to help enhance and rebuild those communities. And of course, when it comes to job criteria, someone goes for 
for a job and the uh, owner starts looking at data as to where that person lives and uses that as leverage as a deciding factor as to whether or not they're going to hire that person because of where they come from. And if anyone in here is naive enough to not believe that that exists, that exists right now and this will enhance that. That's only one of my concerns, but I certainly, uh, as we move towards transparency and understanding its importance, uh, I'm there to see exactly what we as an agency can do to support that. All right. Well, a couple of things that I have to challenge the chief, and I wish again that I could have lied. Um, there's this idea of stigma. Um, I mean, I can tell you in, in the place that I'm living in, when I went to get a mortgage, uh, a couple of banks said, oh, you don't want to live there. And that was long before open data happened. Um, I mean, let's, let's face it, you know, the communities and so on around Toronto, um, uh, the word gets out regardless of whether there's open data or not. And there may be an advantage actually in releasing the data simply because it could counteract the view. And in fact, uh, my own example, I had lived in the building for several years before deciding to buy there. And it's a great building. So um, I'm just saying that the truth may be revealed via open data as opposed to this idea of there's, there's a stigma and it's just going to make it worse. And it's interesting over the years how many times people who have the data will turn to that as an excuse or a reason not to release data. So eh, no good on that one, Chief. Secondly, this idea of someone applying for a job that open data would somehow hurt their chances. I mean, you do have to give the address when you, uh, <laughs> at least as far as I know, when you apply for a job. So I'm not sure that, again, um, open data for any reason is going to destroy that. And I don't know if that's being naive. Sorry if you think so. I would reverse it around and saying that your um, understanding of open data and the value and the opportunities of open data uh, is, is in the early stages. And um, the, the third thing was the idea of context. No one is saying that you have to stop releasing context. Uh, so all the reports that you continually file uh, are viable and, in fact, desirable. But what's uh, an added uh, augmentation, if you like, is the idea of putting the data that you use to come to those conclusions, the raw data, that is, as part of that release. So I see it as half full, sir, not half empty, although I have to uh, applaud you for um, speaking generally that you think that uh, transparency is good and so on. But it is 2016, and uh, open government, the concepts of transparency have been around for a very long time. And certainly the, the idea of saying we're getting there, uh, when will we get there? I mean, you often hear people saying, you know, at the end of the day, we'll finally release our data. Well, when is the end of the day? I would submit that in 2016, the, you know, if it's not the end of the day, it's getting pretty darn close to the end of the day. However, I digress. Generally, it was a positive experience, and I do feel that the people who deposed helped move the board, which is surrounding the chief there, to, um, to ask for a little bit more. And I'm simply saying in this particular version of my blog, that uh, I think that the best thing the chief could do would be to reach out to members of the community right now, hold a think tank or a discussion and talk about um, the type of data that could be used, why there's a feeling that they'd like to see the release, the, the data, um, and, and not just so sit there under that opinion that you've got right now. I mean, how are you going to change or evolve your opinion unless you reach out? And um, this happened in, uh, in June. And um, to my knowledge, there hasn't been any reaching out. So, you know, uh, final thoughts here is uh, if, if your staff aren't necessarily going to speak truth to you, you certainly will get truth from the community. And I just mean that frank opinions. Not that all the opinions are right, not that you have to release your data immediately, but certainly you could release a plan on when you're going to release the data. Stick to that plan. And, um, you know, so much this year, so much next year. Um, one thing that I can say again from having worked in government is that if you do speak the truth back to the community, such as, no, there's not a chance in hell that we're ever going to release that data, that will bottom line be more respected than this idea, oh, yeah, we're working on it, and, um, and the various type of spin that might happen. So my bottom line, great experience. I would encourage anybody who's got uh, opinions on how things are happening and and how government is doing things and any opportunity you might have to go and speak, it's a really cool experience. And the more people that speak, the better, because it shows a disparity and differences of opinion. And it may make the, the, the job of the boards a little harder, but nonetheless, uh, it does help better inform decisions. And in fact, that whole thing in live experience um, is very much a metaphor for what can happen with open data. If you share the data, people will also share what they think about the data. So that's it. Stay tuned for more. We'll talk to you again.